This is Prep Rally, brought to you by the Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette. It's two steps forward, one step back for high school football right now, but the important thing is the two steps forward. COVID-19 continues to throw schools across the state a curveball with game cancellations and quarantine protocols, but teams continue to press on as we have passed the halfway point of the 2020 regular season. There were three games played last week in the 7A West on Friday, and even though Fayetteville has yet to play a conference game, the Bulldogs did find a Friday opponent in Fort Smith Northside, falling 33-30 on a field goal with seven seconds left in the game. Northside quarterback Drayden Norwood, now he is verbally committed to Texas A&M. He led the Grizzlies on the game-winning drive, and with the game tied 30-30, Northside kicker Slate the Iceman Stanton, he kicked a 25-yard uh, field goal for the win. Uh, in this game, Norwood fired three touchdown passes to lead Northside. The loss by Fayetteville kept the Bulldogs winless on the season. In other conference games Friday night, Springdale Harbor won its first game of the season with a 42-6 win against Rogers Heritage. And undefeated Bentonville, they made quick work of Fort Smith Southside in a 35-7 win on the road down in Fort Smith. Our West Termite Pest and Lawn Game of the Week took us to Centerton Friday night where Bentonville West hosted Springdale. The Wolverines scored a pair of touchdowns in the second half and they claimed their first conference win of the season 23-10. West coach Brian Pratt said his team was able to grind out the win thanks to the play of its defense. Well, we felt like we needed to try to run the football and, and uh, they were giving us some trouble and, and uh, we were able to do a little bit better in the second half, but uh, still was able to make some plays when we needed to in the second half. And that's kind of been the way that we've done all year. We'll just continue to try to improve the way we play in the first half. Uh, very sluggish, uh, but I'll get it's a conference win. And with what's going on in this, in this day and age right now, conference wins are huge for us. So uh, we're really excited about getting a win at home and hopefully be able to get another one next week. How big were A.J. Moss's two interceptions for you oh, guys? Oh, they're always big. Anytime you get picks and you win a turnover margin, you're going you're gonna to win the game most of the time. And uh, those two picks were huge, and we were able to answer. Uh, you know, unfortunately, a couple of them got called back, but uh, we were still able to answer and put some points on the board. And uh, So they're huge, yeah. Also in this game, West safety A.J. Moss, he had a pair of second-half interceptions that helped stop Springdale drives. He also recover, recovered an onside kick late in the game after the Bulldogs had scored a touchdown to pull within 23-20. We got a bunch of sophomores coming in, new players, so we really wanted to focus on this year, you know, be the best team that we could be and, you know, go beyond what West has gone beyond for. AJ, how much also maybe does that focus uh, mean as far as knowing what, who you're with and what you're doing off the field? Is that also kind of part of it? You know, oh. you guys keeping your focus on taking care of business, so to speak? Yes, sir. Uh, you know, we definitely uh, want to make sure that inside of the classroom, inside of, you know, when we're presenting ourselves out in Centerton, out in the public, then we show that we're a team that's truly focused. And, uh, you know, we just want to be the best team that we can be and, you know, prove everybody that we're one team and that we really support this community. So two picks tonight for you and recovered an offside kick. How, you know, how do you feel about your, your game tonight? Um, I feel like I did a, a great game, but I have to give it all glory to God and my family and my coaches. But most importantly, my D-line, my linebackers, because without them getting their pass rushes, you know, disrupting the quarterback, giving me time to get my feet set to catch the interceptions, you know, I can't do it without them. But most importantly, all glory to God, you know. Also on Friday night, Van Buren rebounded from its tough overtime loss the week before to outscore Russellville 42-21. Quarterback Gary Phillips passed for more than 300 yards and ran for more than 100 yards and scored three combined touchdowns. Our Cassius Williamson caught up with Gary after the game for this week's River Valley Report. Cassius Williamson here with the River Valley Report. Today I got my man Gary Phillips, yeah. River Valley Player of the Week. He plays for the Vampire Points. Tonight he was 18 to 23. He had a whole bunch of yards, one passing touchdown, two rushing touchdowns. I'm gonna ask him a few questions. Gary, you were able to create offense, passing and rushing. Talk about what you saw on the field. I mean, we had a few plays where things didn't go our way on the line, so uh, Coach Tuck, he has a lot of trust in me, and he tells me if, if anything's blurry, he trusts my legs, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take off and run and hope for the best. Talk about how you have a threat on both sides of the field. Kai, 
Kai Henry having a big game and Jaden Henry having a big game. Talk uh, about those two. Those are both my brothers. I know if I throw the ball up there, I know they'll both go get it. So it feels good having one on the left side, one on the right side, because if there's pressure and I have to roll out, I have a, a big, good receiver. So. Next week you go to Mountain Home. They got Ryan Mallett as a coach. Talk about some things that you're going to expect. Well, first of all, we're going to keep the team, make sure that we're focused. It's a four and a half hour drive, so we're going to stay focused no matter how long. We're going to play on the road, so that's going to be difficult, but we're going to be ready to play. And whatever the weather conditions are, we're going to be ready. Well, this is my man Gary Phillips. We go way back. This is Cassius Williams in here with the River Valley Report. I'll see you next week. Thank you and goodbye. Also in the 6A West on Friday, Silent Springs made its first road trip of conference play and they were shut out 42-0 at Benton. The Panthers, they just ran into a bus saw. Benton took a 21-0 lead in the first quarter and they built it up to 35-0 at halftime to improve to 2-0 in conference play. Benton quarterback Garrett Brown passed for 242 yards and four touchdowns in this win. Also, Greenwood finally got to play a conference game they throttled Mountain Home 40-7 on the road to move to 5-0 on the season. Now, photos from Friday night's football games are available on our website at nwaonline.com. And here's a look at some of the games that we photographed last week. You can purchase these and other photos by visiting our website at nwaonline.com. This week, our West Termite Lawn and Pest Game of the Week will take us to historic Gerald Williams Bulldog Stadium in Springdale as the Bulldogs will host crosstown rival Springdale Harbor. The last time these two teams met on this field, Springdale claimed one of the wildest games I've ever covered with a touchdown and two-point conversion with under two minutes left in the game. Now be sure and catch Rick Fires and I as we preview this game on Prep Rally Live on tape at 4 o'clock Friday afternoon at nwaonline.com. If you want to get the most pregame information for prep football, check out our Prep Rally preview. Now in this special section each week, we profile players from across the region, preview that night's game, and we provide the Hooton statewide rankings and predictions. Now you can see Prep Rally preview in the digital edition of the Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette. And also join us each week for our Prep Rally podcast as we talk prep sports with guest coaches, other media members from across the state and the region. The Prep Rally podcast can be heard on SoundCloud, a Apple, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher on Wednesday afternoons. That's it for this week's show. And a reminder, please mask up and follow social distancing guidelines. Do it for the kids. Do it for the coaches. Just do it. Thanks for watching.